guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching. Today's video is going to be about a little DIY that I have been looking up and I found some stuff on Pinterest and just I googled a lot of stuff also and um, it's something that I came up with or I didn't come up with it but I found it and I'm so glad that I did and so I want to share it with you guys and let me just tell you before I get into this. I'm never going to share something with you and tell you that I really like something unless I've used it at least three to five days. Um, just because I think it takes at least three days to really get a good perspective on whether it's something that you think is going to work for you or not. And also, I wanted to preface this video with, you know, I'm constantly, constantly, constantly changing up my skincare routine. And I feel like that is extremely important because um, as we get older, just like anything, you know, we we naturally build up tolerances to certain things. And I feel like we can build up a tolerance to certain, you know, skincare products and stuff like that. And plus, I just feel like um, we need to use so many different things to address all the issues that we have with our skin. So I'm constantly switching things up. So when I find stuff that works and I'm really excited about it, um, know that I will always keep those in my rotation, you know, as far as my skincare routine and stuff like that. So. Anyways, I think my cat, she's wanting to get on my lap. And she's so funny. Come on. You can get on my lap. She's so funny because anytime that I start filming, she always wants to come in here and sit on my lap. And if I don't let her in, she's just going to sit at the door and she's just going to paw and paw and meow and stuff. So I just have to let her come in and she'll sit there and she'll figure out, she'll do it one paw at a time, like to try to get on my lap and stuff. So I'm like, just go ahead and get here already. <laughs> this is her. Say hi, everybody. Can you say hi? She's like, leave me alone. She's 17 years old. She's really old. So I'm just glad that she's still with me. Oh, she's older than my kids. <laughs> it's crazy. But anyways, okay. So let me tell you what this video is about. This video is going to be about a an exfoliating scrub that I discovered. And um, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know, I've said before that I really love finding DIY home remedies. And this one is called a baking soda milk mask and it's an it's a mask that you that turns into kind of an exfoliator and it and I just absolutely love it and let me just tell you before I get into it guys it is so so important to exfoliate I mean I cannot stress how important it is to exfoliate especially after 40 um you know in your 20s, your cells are constantly regenerating and there's all this cell turnover and you're shedding skin all the time, shedding dead skin and stuff. Well, as you get into your 30s, that process kind of slows down. But after you get into your 40s, my gosh, it slows down so dramatically. And I'm telling you, when I turned 40, it was literally like somebody pushed fast forward on the whole aging process. I mean, it was it was to the point where it was like a little disturbing because it was just, things were just happening so fast and which is why I started researching a lot of stuff. But, and the one thing that I came across uh, more than anything was how important it is to exfoliate after we turn 40. Because, you know, I don't know if you know, but not only does the exfoliating process really slow down, but uh, collagen production already also slows down and so we lose a lot of the elasticity. You've probably noticed if you are 40 or above that whenever you were in your 30s, um, you know, you could raise your eyebrows really high or smile really big and the second you stopped making those expressions, um, the lines just went away. But after you turn 40, those lines don't go away any longer, you know? And so I've got these nice, you know, little lines across my forehead and I can actually like smile with my eyes without even smiling with my mouth because, you know, because you know I've lost elasticity and stuff in my crow's feet and the skin just no longer bounces back. So I'm constantly trying to address you know my skin issues and I'm looking for ways to really initiate more collagen production and just a faster um, cell turnover and a faster shedding process because that's what you really want to do. Because if you do not exfoliate, then all the money that you're spending on eye creams and serums and face moisturizers and stuff like that, you're really just going to be wasting your money because you're, you're not going, going to, to see the effects and the results that you're looking for if you're just putting all these products on top of layers and layers of dead skin. So what you want to do is you want to remove all the dead skin so that your, your new skin is ready to absorb you know, all those products and so that there is a chance that you know, repair and um, penetration can actually take place. That penetration and repair can actually take place. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know why I found that comical just now, but so um, 
So what you want to do is you always want to exfoliate, you know, and not just that, but you know, if you're, if you have layers of dead skin on your face, then when you make expressions, those lines are going to look deeper. The wrinkles, if you've got wrinkles are going to feel heavier. And so you just want to get that dead skin off your face because a lot of times also dead, if you have any problems with like acne or blemishes, um, then you probably need to exfoliate more often. You know, unless you're younger, then those are probably hormonal. But as we get older, you know, um, a lot of it just has to do with if you have dead skin and it's not it's not being shed, then it's just trapping in all that dirt and debris that's between the new skin and the dead skin. And you'll notice that once you start exfoliating more often, you might go through a little breakout, and that's actually a good sign because that means you are removing those dead skin cells that were kind of trapping those impurities um, in between the different layers of skin. So anyways, um, so the wonderful thing about this little exfoliating mask is that milk is so good for your skin and for a few reasons. First of all, it's got lactic acid in it and lactic acid is just a very natural exfoliant and it's a real mild exfoliant. It's not harsh on your skin whatsoever. And then, um, and you want to use either raw milk or whole milk and it's also going to have vitamin D in it. If it doesn't have vitamin D, then it's going to be infused with vitamin D because most milk on the market is. And so vitamin D is also good for our skin. And then it's got vitamin A in it. And if you know anything about retinoids and retin-A, um, they are derivatives of vitamin A. So there's just a lot of good things in milk that's good for our skin. Not just that, I don't know if you know this, and this is just something that I just read recently and I thought it was kind of neat. But anyways, Cleopatra, you know, she's supposed to have had, you know, just beautiful, beautiful skin. And um, they say that she often took baths in, in milk, you know, milk baths. And I think that's a little gross. I don't think I'll ever like soak in a milk bath, but you know, you know what, never say never because I just might, it just depends. Um, but right now I'm just kind of focusing on the face and neck. But anyways, um, so, so that's what's good about milk, the milk portion of this little um, scrub. The reason that baking soda is so good for your skin is, my gosh, I cannot tell you. If you have a chance, Google baking soda and how it benefits the skin, and it will blow your mind. I mean, there are so many benefits to baking soda just in general. Like it's good for your skin, it's good for your hair, your nails. Um, it's actually good internally. And there's actually many websites and, and videos and stuff about how baking soda can cure cancer, which I was like, wow. I mean, that's a pretty big statement to make, but um, it was really just some interesting stuff. So if you have a chance, you should definitely Google um, all the benefits of baking soda. But anyways, baking soda has a lot of natural antibiotics, so it really helps with, you know, fungus and debris and dirt and stuff like that. And then it also has anti-inflammatory properties, which, um, which are obviously good for our skin when it pertains to like acne and blemishes and stuff like that. And there was something else that was really good about the baking soda. You know, I, I'm sure that as I'm making this video and I'm talking, I'm just gonna start listing stuff, you know, um, on the sides of all the other, you know, reasons that milk and baking soda both are just so good for your skin. But anyways, um, the reason I like the baking soda portion of it is because it's got this really, really fine, fine grit. And when you make the consistency just right, you don't wanna make it too watery, you don't wanna make it too thick. When you make it just right, it's just a perfect amount of grit and you know a lot of times I, I have stayed away from scrubs because I feel like sometimes they might be doing damage to my skin because sometimes the granules are too big or too you know uh, abrasive or something like that but um, that's why I like the baking soda because it's super super fine but I but you can definitely see a difference before and after you've done uh, one of these little scrubs and let me tell you, if you've got one of those little magnifying mirrors, you can get them at the dollar store for a dollar. If you go outside and you take a good look at your skin up close, you will see, you know, just the age spots and the discoloration, and you can actually see the flaky skin and stuff that's just sitting on top of your skin. And so look, you just want to get rid of all that, you know, and the best way to do it is just to constantly exfoliate and try to remove that. Oh, that's another thing. Both milk, I think, and baking soda have a, kind of a lightening effect. So they really help to diminish scars and, um, and lighten age spots and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get into the bathroom. I'll tell you how I mix it together. I'll show you how I mix it together. I'll show you how I apply it to my face, how long I leave it on, 
how I scrub it off and stuff like that. And then, and then we'll just say goodbye. So, um, so I'll meet you in the bathroom. Okay, so now we're in the bathroom and I went ahead and pulled my hair back and I went ahead and washed my face because you definitely want to start with a clean face. You don't want to be rubbing old makeup or, you know, dirt into your face because that will just kind of defeat the whole purpose. But anyways, um, so I went ahead and cleaned my face. I didn't bother taking off my eye makeup because um, honestly, I've got to go pick up my kids right after this and I just didn't want to have to reapply. Not just that, I just feel like some things should just be left to the imagination because, um, you know, no sense in you guys seeing my, you know, dead eyes just yet without mascara and curled eyelashes and stuff like that. But anyways, okay, so let me show you what you're going to need. First, you're going to need um, some baking soda. And this is just Arm & Hammer baking soda. And you want to get baking soda. Um, don't be confused with baking powder. It's definitely got to be baking soda. Okay, then you're going to want some milk. And you want to get whole milk or you can use raw milk. Um, both are very good and you definitely want the fat content in there. Do not get skim milk um, because it's the fat where all the good stuff is found. Then you're going to want a little ramekin like this and a little spoon to do some measuring. And then you're going to want a little, or you're not going to, you don't need this, you don't need the brush, but I like to use it. I like to pretend like I'm like, I don't know, pampering myself, pretend like I'm at a spa or something. I just, I never pamper myself. I just don't. So, you know. It's just the little things that make me happy, and if this makes me feel like I'm being pampered, then whatever. You don't need it though, so. Okay, so let me just show you how you're gonna mix it, because you definitely wanna get the consistency right. You don't want it to be too thin, because then it'll just, you know, fall off your face, and you wanna have the grit, you know, just about right, and you don't want it to be too thick, obviously, because then you're not gonna be able to smear it around. So let me show you um, the consistency that you need, and then I'll show you how to apply it. Okay, so. You want to get your baking soda, and you usually want to get about two teaspoons, that's a little less, you want to get about two teaspoons of baking soda to one teaspoon of milk. That usually gives you the right consistency, but sometimes you have to just tweak it a little bit. Let's see, Let me just mix it. That might be, no, that looks pretty good. You might want to add just a little baby bit more of the baking soda, just a tad bit thicker than that, but you don't want to do too much. Maybe that much. That's pretty good. You see how it's, it's not totally clumpy, but it's not just pure liquid either. So that's, that's a good, good consistency right there. So maybe two and a half, teaspoons of baking soda and one teaspoon of milk. Okay, so now you just want to apply this mixture to your face. And so you just put on your brush and you just kind of paint it on. This feels so good. It's so like cool and soft. <laughs> so now you just let it sit for like 10 minutes and it really starts to get hard. And I guess, you know, it really starts to get really, your skin feels really, really tight. And I just kind of think, you know, maybe it's drawing out all those oils and impurities and stuff like that, but it's kind of a, a good tightness. Um, I feel like it's got to be so perfectly even. Okay, so whenever it dries, I'll be back and then I'll, I'll show you how I rinse it off. Okay guys, so I'm back and um, it's really, really hard right now. I don't know if you can tell how hard it is. Um, if I smiled, you, you would look at, oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, so if you want to see what you're going to look like in like 20 or 30 years, Go ahead and put this on and then smile real big. <laughs> don't do it. I don't want you guys to see me. Just kidding. Okay, so you're gonna want um, some little cotton rounds like that. And all I do to get it off, I, I don't just try to get it off. I really wanna try to scrub in there and exfoliate You know, at the same time. So what I do is I just turn on the water, get it really nice and wet, and then Just start scrubbing in circles. 
No, it's like the perfect consistency. Oh yeah, it is. If it gets in your mouth, it's, it, it tastes really, really salty. And then around your eyes, you really want to be very, very delicate. Now, I just kind of wet it and then barely move it around. Because I feel like the eyes, under your eyes, they definitely need to be exfoliated too sometimes. But you have to be so careful because that skin is super, super delicate, you know. And so you just take it all off your face. But, and like I said, usually I do this in the shower because it can get kind of messy. Wow, it feels so good already. This is really getting the job done, I can tell. I love how nice. <laughs> Got water dripping all the way down my face. Okay, I'm gonna finish this up and I'll say goodbye. Okay guys, so that is that. Um, super simple, super cheap. And afterwards, oh my gosh, your face is gonna feel like super tight and it's just gonna feel so soft. I can't tell you like how soft my face feels right now but anyways it leaves your skin really really soft and just ready to absorb you know whatever product you're going to put on your skin next but also i feel like after you do a really good exfoliation that you just wear your makeup so much better i mean because it's you're putting makeup on a smooth canvas and, and obviously that's going to be better than you know putting your makeup on um just uneven skin tone and stuff like that so anyways um and i feel like i need to throw this little disclaimer in there real fast because i have what's considered, I think it's like normal to dry skin. And so this really works out well for me and my skin really responds very well to it. Um, I've never had any other skin type, so I don't know, you know, if you have a different skin type, it may or may not work out for you, but um, that's just how most things go. You know, some things that are gonna work out for me aren't gonna work out for you and vice versa. So um, I feel like I just needed to throw that in there because I don't want somebody to be like, you lied, you know, give me a rash or you know, whatever, I don't know. I mean. So far, I haven't read anything about it giving rashes. It seems to work across the board, you know, unless you have like some specific skin condition, then you really might want to, you know, um, do it with caution. So anyways, just thought I'd throw that in there, but hope you liked this video. And um, if you did, don't forget to give it a, a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So I will see you at my next video. Go scrub your faces off and have a wonderful weekend. It's Friday, so hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I know I'm gonna have a wonderful weekend. I love weekends. So I'll see you at my next video. Bye. Mwah. <laughs> Too old to be doing that. Thanks, <laughs>